Hello, I'm Harvey Galvin, Jr., Chairman of the Lumbee Tribe. And today we're at Scotland Healthcare Systems in Laurenburg, North Carolina, which is in Scotland County, which is part of the Lumbee Tribe territory. And I'm happy to be here with these three Lumbee medical professionals that work here at Scotland Health in Laurenburg to bring you the messages of what they do each and every day for not just our Lumbee people, but all people who come into this facility with COVID complications. A lot of times our COVID patients come in requiring little to no oxygen um, and they quickly progress to where they are dependent upon high concentrations um, provided by either a mask or a cannula through their nose. Oftentimes this leads to intubation quickly because they tend to spiral. Um, once you know that happens, we are the nurse is the primary contact for that patient. Um, oftentimes, you know, family is not allowed in because it's, we're scared that it'll, you know, um, spread more in our community. So we're the eyes and ears for that family. Um, also for that doctor, a lot of times to keep that patient safe. Um, they require a lot of attention. They can go bad, what we term go bad quickly. Um, even just the brief removal of their oxygen, sometimes they will spiral fast, um, requiring quick intervention. The hospital decided that anesthesia would provide the airway support since we're considered airway experts for any patient, as she described, who is what we would say is crashing. The disease process has taken over their lungs and they need to help breathing. The oxygen is not enough at that point, so they need to be put on a ventilator or, as I'll say, um, life support. And what does that mean? That means now, instead of me being able to do what I normally do in room one, for example, we're called overhead to run up to whatever room is needed. And I'll go up to the head of the bed, we'll push those life-saving drugs, and we'll put you on a ventilator. What does that look like? We don't have a ventilator here, but I do have the device that I use in order to do that. This here blade, if you can see here, is what I have to use to insert through your mouth, lift up, and find the vocal cords. Once I do that, I'll take this here, what we call an ET tube, essentially a straw, that goes through your mouth, in through your vocal cords, and you are then attached to a machine that will breathe for you. That's what's initially, basically keeping you alive. Oftentimes too, you know, I personally have had to hold an iPad while a patient um, is expiring. Um, I've watched a loved ones say virtual goodbyes to their loved ones, and it's pretty sad when you think about it, that that's what life comes to. You know, you're dying in a room with a practical stranger instead of being surrounded by your loved ones. Um, it's taking a toll on us as nurses. We work long hours, we're working extra hours just to make sure your loved ones are cared for. It's mentally exhausting, it's physically tiring, and most of all, it's emotionally draining. Um, we often try to you know, not get so involved, um, try to leave the emotional aspect out of it, but it's hard to do. It's hard to do. There's still people um, and there's a different kind of fear in their eyes versus other patients that we care for. So I'm just here to encourage you to do all that you can um, to protect your family, to protect our community, um, and, you know, take, take the vaccine just, just to help you. That way you don't have any regrets later. I hope that what we've said here today um, has been helpful for you to know what we're experiencing here in our hospital. The 32 patients I have here today, I'm very hopeful that a month from now that number will have dwindled down to, to five and then to two and then ultimately to zero. Okay. The best way we can keep you out of this hospital is by your body having what it needs to fight off COVID and those are antibodies. There are two ways to get antibodies. The very best way is through vaccination. That's where you take a shot of a vaccine, your body develops antibodies so that when it comes in contact with COVID, it's kind of like a Pac-Man, that antibody is, and it, it, it eats the virus, it fights off the virus. It keeps the virus from being able to do the destruction to your lungs. The second way I can get antibodies in you is through an outpatient antibody infusion. So say you test positive for COVID today, if you meet certain criteria, and the criteria are hard to meet, um, you qualify for an antibody infusion. 
the reason that's not as good as a vaccine is because by the time most people know they have COVID, the virus has had about a week to already do some damage. So the vaccine decreases your chance of being in the hospital by 90%. The infusion does it by about 70%. I want you to have antibodies. The best way to get them in is through the vaccine.